We are grateful to Thee that we have the privilege of calling You our Father. And we pray tonight that You will bless us as Your dear, hungry, thirsting children. And if there should be by chance someone here tonight who doesn't know You as their Savior, may this be that time when they will say that forever one great yes to you. Grant it, Lord. Heal the sick and the afflicted. Use us as thy children to draw others unto thee. For we ask that in the name of thy dear Son, our Savior. Amen. Amen. And be seated. Just becoming a little hoarse from uh, very much speaking, and I have just been speaking this afternoon here in the auditorium, and many today private interviews upon cases that could not maybe just reach out by faith and receive, and then the Holy Spirit by many visions today in the room to reveal and to bring to pass and bring to the hearts of the people and bring them to the great knowledge of what they need to know about the Lord. We're so glad that God is so good to us to do that. I would like to ask tonight if the Lord willing If I don't get to all that I can tonight, I just want to speak a few moments. And then tomorrow night, I'm going to try to finish up the group. But perchance that many doesn't get in because there's about maybe 1,500 people yet to be prayed for. And to minister to them one by one, it would be very hard. But if you will see my son tomorrow afternoon when he's giving out prayer cards, and if it's an emergency case, something that you just feel that you can't leave, and you do not get a prayer card, I'm going to ask them if they'll have an emergency room, that I could come maybe a half hour early before the services and minister to those who can not Uh, be in the prayer line and maybe cannot just accept it in the light that it's supposed to be. I appreciate your sincerity and believing in my prayer for you. But it isn't my prayer that does the work. It's your faith in God that does the work. And it's, of course, I realize that we're to pray one for the other. And that does mean a, much. But my prayer would be just like any other man's prayer for you. But what God wants his people to do is to believe him just by his word. Right. His word is sufficient because it tells us that our healing and our salvation is a past tense, that God has already did that for us. You and I, if someone wouldn't take our word, that would just settle it. But that isn't our Lord. He will not leave one stone uncovered, but what he will, or one stone, but what he will roll over to give an opening or some way to get his blessed children to believe on him. He sends to us teachers, pastors, evangelists, prophets, gifts in the church, everything that's possible that the mind of great Jehovah could do to get you to have faith in the finished works of his son at Calvary. It's hard, especially my type of ministry in America. We're taught so many different things, so many different approaches, and it's been drilled into the people. In Africa, 
There is a man here present now. He's on the platform or in the audience at Durban, South Africa. By the same things that you see done right here, the power of the resurrected Christ performing what you see each night and turning to the audience and 30,000 received Christ as personal Savior at one time. And I offered prayer for something, well, I, there's no way I'm not a good estimating on people. But many, many thousands were gathered and scattered for blocks just every way and making one prayer for that entire group, Dr. F.F. F. Bosworth, which Cato Tabernacle will never forget. How many knows Brother Bosworth? Wonderful character. He was with me as the acting manager. And after I left from that place, they claimed they took seven truckloads of crutches and chairs and sticks and clubs that the people had been on coming up when Brother Art Bosworth estimated 25,000 definite healings at one prayer. Think of it. And India, it exceeded that by many times because there were more people. But in America, it's something different somehow. I just can't seem to make the people to understand. I don't mean you, but I mean in whole. They can't grasp it because they got so many things contrary. One saying, oh, that's this, that. And the poor people don't know what to believe. That's what makes it hard. I know I'm an unlearned person, and I'm not trying to use this crutch to support my ignorance. But I believe that education has been one of the, the most outstanding curses that the kingdom of God has had. That's right. If you just forget what you know and look to Christ, you'll do it. I have seen it. Now, remember the emergency room tomorrow night. Now, I wish to read just a portion of his blessed word. And to watch my timepiece here that I will not go over time. Last evening I went over time and didn't get, had to take the regular prayer line. But tonight we're going to try not to have that line. Just pray for the sick. Now I want you to give me your undivided attention while we're speaking on the word. For if we give more time to the word of God than we do to as we do to other things, the church should be better taught. In the Psalm 63, we read these words. O God, Thou art my God. Early will I seek Thee. My soul thirsts for Thee. My flesh longeth for Thee. In a dry and thirsty land where no water is. To see thy power and thy glory. So as I have seen thee in thy sanctuary. Because thy love kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee. And may the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word. As I read this scripture some weeks ago, I could not interpret the psalmist as he being a prophet would say, thy love kindness is better than life. The most precious thing that there is in this whole world is life. And after reading it, I find, after studying, that there is two kinds of life. And the psalmist was speaking of both of them kinds of life. 
And no matter what we could be offered, there's nothing no greater to us or could be greater than to offer life. And there is only one eternal life. And that life is in Christ. The life of God which is in Christ Jesus. I can just think of about 6,000 years ago when there was not a speck of any kind of life on the earth. Just the mere bleak desert. Not no life at all. And we're taught in the Bible that we are the dust of the earth. God made us from the dust. You said he made the original man, Adam, from the dust. But he made you from the dust. You can only live because something dies. Every day, something has to die so you can live physically. If you eat beef, the cow died. If you eat pork, the hog died. If you eat fish, the fish died. If you eat potato, the potato died. If you eat bread, the wheat died. You live by dead substance. Therefore, if it takes dead substance to make us live physically, how much more did it take death so we can live spiritually forever? Something had to die. So therefore, we could think that those who think that water baptism saves, that's out. Those who think that good work saves or law, that's out. It taken death that you might live. Christ died. And the Bible said to know Him is life. Not to know of Him, but to know Him, the person, is life. Let us take now for a few moments a little mental picture. Just see how complete it is. I was speaking at Aquinas some time ago, and a doctor was a little skeptic. And he said, the whole thing seems to be muddled in my mind, Reverend Branham. I'm a little skeptic of the virgin birth. I'm a little skeptic of Christ really being the Son of God. So I asked him that question. I said, Doctor... Is it true that every time I eat, I renew my life? He said, that's correct. Makes blood cells. I said, then I want to ask you something, being a scientist too. How is it that when I was 16 years old, I eat the same food that I eat now? Bread, potatoes, so forth. And every time I eat, I got stronger and larger. And after I passed about 25 years, I eat the same food now. And instead of getting stronger and bigger, I'm getting older and weaker. Now, if you're pouring water into a glass out of a a container, and that glass starts filling up and then it gets to a certain place, then you pour faster and more and it continually goes down without any place for it to leak out. It cannot be explained scientifically, but it can be by the Bible, for it's an appointment that God has made. And that's the only way it can be explained. But we've got the blessed hope of knowing this, that God brings us to a certain age, makes a picture out of it, Death sets in, but in the resurrection, there will not be one sight of death. All the old age and things will be gone forever. Everything that the devil did and death did will be taken away in every memory of it. 
It'll be gone forever. For instance, here about a year or two ago, I was combing what few hairs I had. And my wife said to me, she said, Billy, you're getting bald-headed. I said, but I haven't lost the one of them. She said, where are they at? And I said, you tell me where they were before I got them. I'll tell you where they are waiting for me to come to them. <laughs> and that's right. They wasn't, then they were, and then they were not again. They come from somewhere. Now, in the beginning, or if we came from the dust of the earth, our bodies laid on this earth at the beginning. And let's take a little picture like this. God, the fountain of all life, and the Logos that went out of God that brood over the earth. And as he was brooding, or the word means like mothering, or cooing, the first thing as he brood, the little moistures begin to come together and a little flower raised up. God said, that's good, just keep on brooding. And the next thing, the grass and vegetation comes up. That's beautiful, just keep on brooding. Then the trees came up. That's beautiful, said God, just keep on brooding. The birds flew from the dust. Wonderful, just keep brooding. The animals come from the dust. Keep on brooding. And then man came from the dust. God brought man up out of the dust of the earth. We're told we're made of 16 elements of the earth. Potash, calcium, petroleum, cosmic light, and so forth. And if we had been brought to this place by the grace of God, and we're free moral agents to make a choice, and if the Holy Spirit that brewed us from the earth and starts to brewing to our hearts, and we accept Him and brew back to Him. How much more is He able to raise us up in the last days when we got a chance to make a choice? So it could only be through the brooding of the Holy Spirit. That's how life comes, is by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, you can only have life by the Holy Spirit. Right. That's why Jesus said, except the man be born again, he can in no wise see the kingdom of God. Right. And the psalmist saying, thy love kindness is better than life. Then I begin to think, what kind of a life was he speaking of? that the love kindness of Father was better than life. Then it come to my mind that there is a way that seemeth like it's life. It is a perverted life. Now the devil cannot create nothing. God is the only creator there is. And what is unrighteousness? Is righteousness perverted? Right. Then we notice that there is a perversion of righteousness makes unrighteousness. It's not original. And it's, it's not right. The original it is right. Therefore, God had no beginning and He has no ending. And if we become a part of God, we can no more die than God can die. Yeah. Because we got His life in us yeah. by the new birth. Yeah. And we're just as eternal as God yeah. is eternal. Yeah. It cannot perish. Jesus said, He that heareth my words, believeth on him that sent me, hath eternal life. Shall never come into the judgment, but pass from death to life. Now notice, a few weeks ago I was in a great city, probably not the size of this, it was in Canada, 
And after coming from a glorious meeting where I seen our blessed Lord save the lost souls of sinful men and women and delivered them from their infirmities by their faith in His finished work, I went up into a great hotel. A bunch of an American people were there. They were having some sort of a lodge meeting, a jubilee time meeting, a conference like. And as I went way up on the elevator, got off, started down the hall, I was very much stricken by a real horrible sound. And I stepped back just a moment to see what it was. And to my surprise, two young women, just about in their early twenties, came down the hall just in their underclothes with a bottle in their hand, going from door to door and man pulling at them. And I thought, oh God, maybe somewhere a husband and a little baby, but they were just thinking it as innocent fun. There is no such thing. That's what's the matter with our world today is too much sin called innocent fun. And as I stood back in the shadow, they were most too drunk to recognize me standing there. They came by lovely looking women and man pulling them to the rooms and the other man fussing at about them. I noticed as one passed by, she stopped and she'd taken a big drink from the bottle, handed over to the other, and they made some kind of a real dirty, smutty remark. And she said, Whoopee! This is life! I thought, How mistaken you are, lady! That's death! Right. The Bible said the woman that lives in pleasure is dead while she is a living. Right. How the devil has made people believe that that was life. Some people think that smoking, gambling, drinking, reveling is life. That's death. A perverted life. It is not life. It cannot be life. That kind of a life becomes so miserable so many times people take a gun or something and rid themselves of that life. So that could not be the kind of life that the psalmist was speaking of. It is not life. And I thought, then, what makes people do that? How come that men and women will do those things? Then I thought this, God created man to thirst for life. That thirst that's in you is the creation of God. And right and wrong is set before you as the tree of life and death in the Garden of Eden. And God made you to thirst. And how dare you to take that blessed thirst that God has put in you, the thirst after Him, and try to quench it on the things of the world. That's right. Come on. The devil... Trying to make men and women run the nightclubs and cocktail parties and live immorally because they are thirsting and that thirst that's in you is of God and it will never be satisfied until Christ, that fountain of everlasting life, fills your soul. It is totally impossible. The devil will make you believe that you are living. But you are dead. 
in sin and trespasses. How could you take that blessed holy thirst? When I see young ladies on the street, last night when I was going into the hotel, I noticed two nice young ladies, his wife and I were coming walking in. Beautiful young girls, somebody's darling, some mother and father, maybe an old dad has sweated hard to feed them, dressed very nattily, walking in and I was remarking what nice, clean looking ladies as they walked ahead of us. And as they went into the door, they entered to the right to a little bar, dingy, dark, with cigarette smoke and whiskey fumes coming from it. I thought, oh, you're walking into the jaws of hell, into the jaws of death. You may different with me. You may say that's just an old fogey. But my friend, in the end of this life, you'll find out that that's the truth. It's death. You are trying to satisfy hunger. You are trying to satisfy thirst with the things of the world. And that thirst was not given you to be quenched by the things of the world, but by Christ. The inexhaustible fountain of life. When you try to satisfy with that perverted way, tomorrow you wake up with a headache, with a heartache, and you live in Marley. You've got to face the world with a scar on you the rest of your life. You only get death by doing so. But let me invite you tonight. To a fountain that's opened in the house of God, a smitten rock, a geyser of water springing up, and an invitation that whosoever will let him come and quench that thirst that God has put in him. Oh, it's so much easier. It's so much easier to do right than it is to do wrong. Certainly it is. Then the devil has another way. He makes you to quench that thirst. Because after all, it's a religious thirst. It's a thirst after God. Then the devil tells you, just go join the church. That's all you have to do. That's almost as much hypocrisy or worse than going into the bar room to thir- uh, quench the thirst. Except the man be born again. Let me invite you tonight, as Jesus did the woman at the well, who came with a water pot to take water from the well of Jacob. Jesus said to her, Bring me a drink. She said, The well's deep, and thou hast nothing to draw with. He said, But if you knew who you were talking to, and who that is that has asked you, you would ask me for a drink, and I'd give you waters that you don't come here to Jacob's well to draw. Where is this water? She said. He said, It is a spring of water springing up in the soul to everlasting life. The first taste that she got of that when she recognized him and confessed him to be the Messiah. He told her she was living in adultery. She said, Thou must be a prophet. And we know when Messiah cometh, he'll tell us these things. He said, I'm he that speaks to you. She dropped her whole water pot she had tasted something so much better. She ran into the city with a message on her heart. Come see a man who told me everything I did. It was different. If you've never tasted nothing but the water from Jacob's coal farm a well, you come to the Messiah once. To that fountain of life. Yeah. It'll be different from then on. It's life. It gives you 
the hope that nothing else can. It's the only way to life. David must have been thinking of that. David is a woodsman, shepherd. He spoke so much of green pastures and still waters. Oh, if you could just only one time get out into the woods, watch the swaying of the great trees, hear the waters as they ripple, God will speak to you. Up in the mountains where I hunt quite a bit, there's a certain old spring that I just love to pass by. It seems to be so happy. Cold water, always fresh. One day while sitting down by that spring, I said, little spring, what makes you so happy? Are you happy because the animals drink from you? If he could have spoke back, he'd said, no, Brother Branham, that's not what makes me happy and bubble. I said, then, little spring, is it because that I drink from you each year? What makes you happy and bubbling? If he could speak, he'd say, no, Brother Branham, that's not what makes me happy and bubble. I'd say, then, what makes you so happy? He would say this, you see... I am bubbling up because there's something behind me pushing me. There's something bubbling inside. I can't hold it. It has to bubble out. And every man that's born of the Spirit of God has the inexhaustible fountain of Christ inside that's bubbling out. Just something that you can't hold your peace. David spoke of the waters The Bible said there is a fountain open in the house of God for the cleansing of the soul. And then again, David being a man who dealt into the woods and he learned a lot about wildlife. And in one of the Psalms he cried, As the heart which is a deer, as the heart thirsts for the water brook, so my soul thirsts after the old God. I often wondered what David wrote that about until I learned about deers. And back in that country and in other countries, they have wolves and wild dogs. And they attack the deer because it's easy prey for them. And that's a very good type of the devil. You take a beautiful woman or a handsome young man, that's the very prey for the sins of this world. Just to prey a little innocent boy of 16 or 17 or a little girl. Just to prey to the devil. To feast on those wild dogs lay in ambush. I've seen it in Africa. I've seen it in other countries. And they jump on these little deer. The first thing they do is try to break this string behind their legs. Then they can't run. We call it, in a hunter's voice, hamstring them. And then, if he cannot grab them there, he grabs them by the throat. Jerks the juggler vein loose. It bleeds to death just in a moment. Then there's a flank in the deer. And he'll run and jerk his teeth into that. And if he's a big heavy dog and a small deer, he can throw that deer on the ground from the flank. He's got him in mid-center and he swings the deer off his feet. As the dog grabs it and throws himself over, he throws the deer to the ground. And they go right in and just tear that little fellow to pieces. Many times, the mouth of flesh pulls out, and the deer is so quick and can maneuver his little body so fast that sometimes he can get away then when the dogs are rolling before he can get up, the deer can get away. But if there's any hunters here that knows that a wounded deer's got to find water right now, 
and I could imagine seeing the little deer with the blood running out of him. He's watching. He's painting. He's looking for the water brook. If that deer can get to that water, he'll live. I've trailed them many times when they cross the tr- creek and drink, run down the creek a little piece, run up on the hill, cross back and get some more water. He'll just keep on running as long as he can get water. But if he doesn't get water, he'll perish. That's what David said. My soul's thirsting after you like the heart. I must have you, God, or perish. And tonight to this sinful world who's been bitten by the mad dogs of hell with all of this modern jazz music and dirty television programs cracking jokes and so forth like that. You're a mad dog bit. You're trying to quench that thirst with stagnated waters of the devil. May your heart become so thirsty that you must find Christ or die. The deer, as he thirsts for the water brook, so my soul thirsts after thee, O God. Just take a drink from there. You'll never have to hear another sermon on morals, how to dress and how to act and how to conduct yourself. Some time ago in the South, there was a slave buyer went by. They used to buy slaves like they would automobiles, human beings, sell them. And there was a man who would go buy a broker. He'd buy so many slaves from this man and so many from this one. He would take them and sell them, make profit. One day he came to a great plantation. And the slaves coming from the homeland from Africa, they were weary, and they did have to whip them to make them work. And this broker noticed on this plantation there was one young man with his chin up, his shoulders back. He didn't have to whip him. He was just up and at it at all times. The broker said to the owner, let me buy that slave. The owner said, he's not for sale. Well, said, what makes him so much different than the other slaves? Is he a boss? No, he's not a boss. He's just a slave. Said, maybe you feed him just a little different than you do the other slaves. Said, no, he eats out in the galley with the rest of them. And the broker said then, So what makes him so much different than the other slaves? And the owner said, I wondered about that myself till I found out. He said, I found out that over in the homeland in Africa, that boy is the son of the king. Though he's an alien, he conducts himself as a king's son. Hallelujah. He helps the moral morales of the rest of the slaves because knowing though he's away from home, he's a son of a king. And he acts like a son of a king. Oh, brother, my father is rich with houses and land. He holds the wealth of this world in his hand. Of rubies and diamonds and silver and gold, His coffers are full. He has riches untold. If that would make an African Negro slave, realizing his father is a king, that he could throw out his chest as a slave, what ought it to do to a born-again man and woman? It ought to make you act like a daughter of God and a son of God. And if you've ever tasted and become a child of God, I'm sure you'll do it. You'll conduct yourself as sons and daughters of the King. <laughs> Think of it while we pray. Let's bow our heads just a minute. I'm a child of the King. A child of the King. With Jesus, my Savior. 
I'm the child of a king. Are you guilty tonight? You women that's acted like the world, supposing that they've been Christians, dressed like the world, talk like the world, you men out smoking, drinking a little friendly drink, carrying on the way you have, do you realize that you are a son of the King of Heaven? You must act like it. If you're guilty, ask Him to forgive you. He'll take you back. Creating you a thirst that you just can't go any farther without finding that water brook. Are you wounded tonight? Has the dogs of popularity, has the hounds of hell galloped on your heels until they have bitten you and corrupted you and your soul really thirsts now to be saved? If you do, there's a fountain open here in the church tonight. The risen Son of God who will give you eternal life by asking. Now, blessed Lord, there is the little message that Thou hast placed upon my heart and I have given it to this little church. And I pray, God, that You will let it sink deep down into the hearts. And may it cause such a thirst that the people will realize that they must find Christ immediately or perish. How do we know of them just crossing and daddling around in sin that some hour the enemy will overtake them and that'll be the last of them? Rant tonight, Lord, before they get caught away in this mad rush in this last days of formal, ungodly living calling themselves Christians. You said they'd be heady, high-minded lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, truce-breakers, false accusers, incontinent, and despisers of those that are good, having a form of godliness and denying the power thereof. Before they're caught in such a trap, Lord, may they come to that fountain filled with blood, drawn from Emmanuel's veins, where sinners plunge beneath the flood, lose all their guilty stains. May it be a serious moment for every person in divine presence. In Jesus' name, with our heads bound, I'm going to ask you a very striking thing. Are you one of those who's blinded by the things of the world and you've never accepted Christ? Are you one of those who are trying to quench that thirst that's in you by drinking, smoking, stealing, lying? Or have you went far enough to do this? To go down and put your name on a church book, Pentecostal, Presbyterian, Baptist, whatever it might be, trying to quench that thirst, and you've never tasted to see the Lord is good? Or you say, I thought it did. But if you're still doing the things you used to do and still even craving for them, there's still something wrong. Don't you want to really surrender your life tonight and to give Him your heart? If you would want to do that, would you just raise your hand saying, Brother Bradham, pray for me. God bless you, son. God bless you, my brother. Bless you, sister. You, you, you. Back to my left, back in this way. God bless you, lady. God bless you. Someone else, raise your hand. I now believe God bless you, sister, back there. God bless you. To my right, someone say, Brother Brandon, pray for me. God bless you, lady. I see your hand. There is the fountain. God bless you, brother. God bless you, brother. Filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. When sinners plunge beneath this blood, lose all their guilty state. The very desire the worshiper once purged has no more conscience of sin. For by one sacrifice he has perfected forever those that are sanctified. Have you ever come to that fountain to lose your guilt and your desire for sin? Have you ever tried to quench that thirst with reaching your hands to heaven and saying, God, fill my thirsty heart? 
If you haven't, will you just raise your hands? Do that much for Christ tonight. If you're a church member, if you're a backslider, if you're a sinner and never come to Christ, raise up your hand, won't you? God bless you back there, sir. God bless you too. Someone else, God bless you, sonny boy there. God bless you, sir, with the striped shirt. Another? God bless you, sister, back here. Now, as our heads are bowed, wish we could spend a little longer for this altar call. I'd like to ask you something. You say, Brother Branham, I know I should put my hand up, but I don't know why I don't. Oh, brother dear, don't let the devil try to quench that again tonight. You know you long for God. There's a lot of you Pentecostal people here. You're longing for God. You might have went through the emotions and the dances and the little evidences and things that you've had. That isn't what I'm talking about. The Lutheran thought they had it when the just shall live of faith. The Methodist said when they shouted, they had it. They found out they didn't. The Pentecostal said when they spoke for tongues, they had it. They found out they didn't. Brother, don't take a substitute. These things, shouting and speaking in tongues, that's all right. But that's an attribute. Have you got Christ? That's it. Got Christ in your heart, brother. Something that makes you bear the fruits of Christ. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and meekness. Oh, I've seen people shout and dance in the Spirit and speak with tongues and enough temper to fight a buzzsaw and go out and live every day ungodly and half-dress themselves and, and do shady deals and everything like that. Brother, that's not the fruits of the Spirit. Come on back to the Bible. Come back to the fountain. Come back and receive Christ. These other little things will take care of themselves as long as you receive Christ and the life is going with it. These other things will flow freely. But don't try to get the other thing before you get Christ. He is the fountain of life. The only resource. And He's the inexhaustible fountain of life. You cannot exhaust His goodness, His mercy. Is there another before praying? One more hasn't raised her hand. Would you raise your hand now? I know this being a conference, it's hard because most of them are Christians. God bless you, lady. That's a real thing to do. God bless you, little boy. God bless you, lady, over there again. That's right. Just God bless you, sir, back there. God bless you just behind. God bless you, lady, behind there. You say, Brother Benham, does that mean anything when they raise their hands? The difference between death and life. That's what it means. God bless you, lady. I've seen you sitting right here. You say to raise up my hand? Yes, sir. When you raise your hand, you break every law of gravitation. Why? It shows there's something supernatural in you. And that supernatural being is in you has broke the laws of gravitation and defied science and raised that hand to Almighty God, your Creator, that you've made a decision that you'll serve Jesus Christ. Certainly it means the difference between death and life. If you mean it, if you don't mean it, doesn't mean nothing. But if you mean it, all right, once more, is there one that hasn't raised their hand just before praying? What difference will the prayer make? God bless you there, sir. What difference will the prayer make? Prayer changes things. Prayer change has the kind from death to life. Prayer changed William Branham from death to life. Prayer changed every sinner in here from death to life. Certainly it does. It's prayer that does it. Now let us pray. Blessed Heavenly Father, on the results of representing you here tonight by your word and by the great prophet David who wrote those inspired songs years ago through hearing of the word some 20 or 30 or more hands has been raised tonight that they would accept thy beloved Son as their personal Savior. Maybe little does that person know that that one that knocked at their heart is no one other but Jehovah God. Because our blessed Lord said that no man can come to me except my Father draws him first. 
And then the Father gives the, the loved one to the Lord Jesus as a love gift. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that you'll baptize them right now in the Holy Spirit of love and peace and joy. Place in them that something that takes the place and satisfies. Not wine that biteth like a nettler, stingeth like a serpent, but that satisfying potion that the Lord Jesus has allotted for us, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. May it come to every one of them just now. May from this night henceforth they live drinking from the fountain, living on the mountain with a jubilee experience in their heart and win others and invite them to the fountain. Granted, immortal and eternal Father God, in the name of thy Son, the Lord Jesus, we ask it. Amen. Let's sing that just once real softly. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. When the sinners plunge beneath the flood, lose all their guilty stains. There is Let's raise our hands and sing this. Ever since by faith I saw that stream thy flowing wounds supply, redeeming love has been my theme and shall be till I die. Do you feel real good? Say amen. amen. Don't you feel this all scoured out? I do when I know the presence of the Holy Spirit here. All right. Ever since by faith I saw just on the side. That's the kind of songs I love. I'd rather have them in all your little old chopped up <laughs> boogie-woogie things that you try to put in church and take the place of the old-fashioned hymn. It'll never do it. 
No, sir, the Holy Spirit loves those old-fashioned songs. I just love it. It just goes way down deep in me. Maybe it's... Oh, I believe you do, too. Sure you do. You love those old-fashioned songs. I'm just one of them old-fashioned Christians. Got saved in the old-fashioned way. Believe in an old-fashioned salvation, an old-time saving grace. I love it like that. Amen. Wouldn't trade it for all your modernistic jumping and running and carrying on. I love it, the old-fashioned way. Now, it's time for prayer for the sick. I wish our sisters would, brothers, whoever's playing the music, if they would play just for a moment. The great physician now is near that sympathizing Jesus. He speaks the drooping heart to cheer no other name but Jesus. And I want your undivided attention just for a few moments. Tonight, the Lord willing, I'm trying for my second meeting to do as I had a revelation to do that worked so wonderfully in Canada a few weeks ago. The basic thought of the the way I pray for the sick, which is secondarily, but it is to bring faith to the audience that they would see the direct evidence of the resurrection of Christ. We people here in America have been taught you got to lay your hands on them. Lay your hands on them. Well, you know, in the, that's a Jewish idea. That's not a Gentile doctrine of the Bible. You remember, Jeriah said, come lay your hands on my daughter and she'll live. But the Roman centurion said, I'm not worthy that you come under my house. Just speak the word. Jesus said, that's the greatest faith. I never saw that in Israel. That's the way. But we just don't seem to be able to, to comprehend it in America. Now, as far as I know, every person in the presence here is absolutely total strangers to me. I've seen a little, I believe it's this Rosella. Is that you sitting there, Rosella? Have you ever given your testimony around this meeting? At Hammond, I believe it was, Indiana. One night in the balcony or somewhere, I don't remember where it was, Fred Astaire's dancer had just been exposed at the audience. And in there somewhere, a little lady come, nervous, trembling, and the Holy Spirit spoke to her and told her she was an alcoholic and on her road to torment and whatever he told her, I don't know. But that girl had been given up by doctor after doctor, alcohol, synonymous and everything. And Jesus Christ in his mercy took that alcohol, craved from that girl, and she's one of God's chosen saints tonight for the last three or four years, has walked Chicago and all kinds of byways and everything else and give testimony to the grace of God. Tonight, sitting here, saved by the grace of God, humble, loving, Christian, beautiful young woman. Would you mind just standing up, Rosella? I don't want to make you uh, a pointing out block. That's what the grace of God can do. Certainly it is. That's the only one that I know of just now in the audience, but my recording boys and Brother Beeler sitting here. But the Holy Spirit knows each one of you. He knows who you are, what you have a desire for. Jesus perceived the thoughts of the people. Is that right? Yes. They touched his garment and were made whole. The Bible claims he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Is that right? A high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. He was crucified, dead, buried, rose the third day, ascended on high, sitting at the right hand of the majesty on high, making intercessions upon our confession. A high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. Now, if he can be touched by our infirmities, Jesus is here tonight in the form of the Holy Spirit. How many knows that Jesus is in the form of the Holy Spirit? Hallelujah. He said, I am the vine, ye are the branches. Is that right? right? Now the vine doesn't bear fruit, the branches bear fruit. And the Holy Spirit, which is the vine, is in here tonight 
purging the vine, then what kind of a fruit would the vine bear? Bible fruit. Certainly. Now, if you touch him, he's the same yesterday and forever. He can be touched just like he was then. And now, if God, in his grace, by divine gifts, if we have newcomers here, so I'll quote a couple of scriptures that you might understand. Jesus did not claim to be a healer. He said, it's not me that doeth the work. It's my Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the healing. Jesus said, I do not do one thing until the Father shows me first what to do. I see the Father doing it, then I go do it as he has showed me. How many know that's at St. John 5, 19? Certainly it is. He does nothing until the Father showed him what to do. Well, what did the Father show him? Let's just see it for the newcomers. Just a few things the Father showed him. One day Simon Peter came to him. Jesus had never seen him. He said, your name is Simon, and you're the son of Jonas, so I'm going to give you a name of Peter. How many knows that? He knew his name. He knew where a fish was that had a coin in his mouth and had Peter go to catch it. How many knows that? He knew where some mules were hooked at where two ways met. How many knows that? When Philip went and found Nathanael under a tree praying, brought him back to Jesus, Jesus said, Behold an Israelite in whom there's no guile. He said, Rabbi, when did you know me? He said, Before Philip called you, when you were under the tree, I saw you. He said, You're the Son of God, the King of Israel. The woman at the well I quoted a few minutes ago, he asked her for a drink to get a conversation with her. And she told him that the well was deep. After a while, he found her in trouble. I said, go get your husband. She said, I have none. I said, that's right, you got five. And the one that you now have is not yours. And thou said as well, look at this Samaritan. She said, sir, I perceive that you're a prophet. But we know that when the Messiah cometh, he'll tell us these things. But she couldn't understand who he was. He said, I'm he. And she believed it. And she ran and told the man and caused the revival to strike the city. But the Jews said he's Beelzebub, the devil, the fortune teller. Jesus told him he had forgiven for it, but said when the Holy Ghost come and did the same thing, to speak a word against it, it would never be forgiven. In this world or the world to come. So then Christ promised, St. John 14, for his church, he that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also. Is that right? The same kind of works, more than this shall he do, for I go to my Father. That scripture must be fulfilled. He would call one now and then in the audience, but he said, you'll do more than this, for I'm going to my Father. Purging the gifts and putting them into the church. is sin it on high, give gifts to man. He said, a little while, listen to this striking statement, a little while and the world will see me no more. That world there means the world order. Now from his day until he comes, there'll be tens of thousands of people, no matter what would ever take place, they would never see it. That's right. Jesus said, if I do not the works of my Father, then don't believe me. But if I do the works of my Father, believe the works. Right. See? Now, if Christ is alive, do you believe he's raised from the dead? Does the Bible say in Hebrews 13, 80, he's the same yesterday and forever? Then he's the same in power. He's in his church doing the same works. Then that's the attributes of Christ baptizing his church with the Holy Spirit. Now, no matter what a gift would do here, if there isn't faith out there to receive it, it never would respond. How many knows that? So the man, no matter how much gifted he might be, if the audience doesn't believe, it'll never work. Jesus went into his own city and he said, Well, you've done this in Capernaum and you did this over here. Now let me see you do something here. And Jesus could do no mighty works. And he marveled at their unbelief. Is that right? right. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now let us settle for a few minutes. I want to ask you something. That from this pulpit, if Christ, the Son of God, will honor 
and bless us to come down here and move among us and will do the same works that he did here. He'll do here the same works he did before his crucifixion and resurrection. Will you believe that he's here confirming his word to make his word good? He promised he would. He don't have to do it, but he promised he'd do it. He healed in that day that it might be fulfilled, which was promised of him. How many says, if God will do that, Brother Branham, without anyone coming there, I'll throw my faith to God, and if God will speak back and tell me, and will help me as he did then in that day, like the woman with the blood issue, I promise before God, I believe him. Uh, this has never been done, but just a time or two. Would you raise your hands to him just so he could... God bless you. Now, Heavenly Father, the rest is yours. I commit myself in this church into thy hands. Let thy blessed Holy Spirit move now that this people at the day of judgment could not say, I didn't understand, I didn't know. Your word was not fulfilled, but this group may it not be able to say it after this night. For I pray that you'll fulfill your word and manifest yourself. In the name of Jesus Christ, as I, your humble servant, and these other servants, submit ourselves to you for your great Holy Spirit to work through us. Amen. Amen. Now, just be real reverent. Keep on with the great position, if you will. Slowly. Quiet. Now, I want every believer... How many sick people in here raise up your hand? Sick people or whatever you are. Well, there'd be no way of just designating where, where. It's all over the building. Now, you look this way and just believe with all your heart. Say this in your heart. God, I believe in God Almighty, the Father. I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son. I believe that Jesus Christ, by the Holy Spirit, is in this church tonight. I believe that that's his promise. Speak to me, my Lord. And give me the desire of my heart. And confirm it by speaking back to Brother Branham. Just use him tonight, Lord. And speak back to me. And let me know in some way... And I'll pray, and I'll receive you, and believe you with all my heart. Just pray like that. Just keep looking this way, and pray. Now, I cannot, there's not one thing I can do about it. I want to have a few around over the audience like that for a few moments. Then I want to call a prayer line. Then I'll kind of get that away from me for a little bit. What is it, Brother Branham? It's yielding. If you only knew how to yield, what is in you will operate. But the secret of it is, it's not a secret, it's just the plain truth of the Bible to yielding to the Holy Spirit. When you raised your hand a while ago, the Holy Spirit said, raise your hand. Raise your hand. You said, must I? Must I? Well, Lord, here I am. That's yielding. God saved you on those bases. Now, that's the way anything is. Gifts, you yield to them. The preacher gets in the pulpit, that is, anointed minister. God said, some preachers, some evangelists, teachers, prophets. I'm not a preacher. I don't claim to be a preacher because I can't. I'm just a... Oh, I've not got the education to be a preacher. But my gift is seeing vision, seer. And it's no, it's not, I wish I could speak like some of these ministers here who could stand there and take a gospel text and tie it together, spread it out over the crowd like that, and souls just weeping running at the altar. I'd give anything if I could do that. I wish I had the love of God in my heart in such a way that's what I want, to present the gospel to the people in such a way they just fall and receive Christ. I'd rather have that than all the gifts of healing and everything else there is in the Bible. Give me love and take the rest of it. Let me love him. That's what I want to do, is love him. I'm thankful for the little potion. But just yield to him now, and let's see what he will say. I Just yielding myself, you yield yourself, let the Holy Spirit move. Just be quiet. As the Bible said, be still. And know that I am God. That's what God's Bible says. They say, what are you looking for, Brother Branham? I'm watching and waiting for the Holy Spirit. How many of you ever seen the picture of it? Let's see your hand. Sure, I guess all of you have it here. Somewhere. 
a pillar of fire. The American Photographer Association took the picture of it. It's copyrighted in Washington, D.C. The only supernatural beam was ever scientifically photographed in all the history of the world. See it, Washington, if that isn't right. Examined by George J. Lacey, the head of the FBI fingerprinting document. It's true. If I go home this night, the church knows I've told the truth. The scientific world knows I've told the truth because it's scientifically proved. George J. Lacey said the mechanical eye of this camera will not take psychology. The light struck the lens. And it was true. I just be praying. Now, I see a little lady sitting right here in front of me with her head bowed praying. She happens to be so close. Maybe if I could speak to her just a moment, it would start the Holy Spirit moving in the audience. My beloved sister, if God will let me know what you are praying for, will you receive it? You have an ulcer, don't you? Praying for ulcers. If that's right, just raise up your hand there to God. This little lady is right here. You have ulcers. That's your husband sitting next behind you there. You're praying too, sir, for something. That's your eyes. That's your eyes. Your name's Edna. Wade. You live here in Indianapolis. You live on a street called Kenwood Avenue. Your number is 36, 3726 Kenwood Avenue. Your husband's name's Frank, isn't it? I've never seen you in my life. Is that right? You touched something. Is that truth? If it is, would you stand up on your feet just a minute? All right. You and your husband can go home. You've received what you asked for. You touched the Lord Jesus, the high priest of your confession. Amen. Have faith in God. Don't doubt. Believe with all your heart. Now, be real reverent. Don't stir. Be real reverent. Because every spirit in here is under control of the Holy Spirit. How wonderful. I see that light standing right in this direction here. It's over a little woman sitting back there on the end. She's suffering with um, a kidney trouble. Also trouble with her eyes. She's not from this city. She, I couldn't point her out. But she's from Richmond, Indiana. Her name is Bessie Rush. Stand up, Mrs. Rush, and receive your healing. Christ makes you well. Amen. Lady, would you stand up just a minute? Stand up again, the lady, whoever it was. I don't know you, do I, lady? Never seen you in my life, as far as I know of. Those things, what he said, is the truth? Raise your hand if that's truth or not. All right. God bless you. Are you believing? If thou canst believe. What about in this section? Here's a lady. Light over. She's got her head bowed. She's sitting right down in here. She's praying for someone else. Not herself. She's praying for her mother. Her mother has heart trouble. If you believe with all your heart, your mother will be healed. Amen. Have faith in God. What about over in this section? Do you believe? All your heart? Here's a little lady sitting right back here looking at me. She has trouble with her chest. That's true. The lady next to her has something wrong with her legs. Pains in her legs. Here's her husband sitting on the other side there has trouble with his liver. The other side, the other woman. That's right. 
Maybe you know this. You're all not from this country. Yes, you are. You're from north of here. You're from Newcastle, Indiana. That's right. Raise up your hand. All right? And go home and receive your healing now. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Do you believe? Have faith in God. Don't doubt. Lady here got arthritis. Little lady, she's also praying for her sister who has heart trouble. The lady's a minister. Her name is Mrs. Drake, Mrs. Madeline Drake. Stand up on your feet and receive your healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Have faith in God. Do you believe? What about you back there, sir? Sitting back there by the post. You got heart trouble. You're from Columbus, Ohio. Your name is Mr. Fitch. Rise up, Mr. Fitch, and receive your healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you believe? Amen. Let us pray now for a moment. Blessed Heavenly Father, the Bible said in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. And this audience tonight, just becoming under anticipation, knowing that just a few hours, one more service, and it'll close. We pray, God, that somehow or another that you'll get a hold of every heart in here just now and let them see that Jesus Christ still lives and reigns. And I pray that everyone that passes through this line or passes in or out of these doors tonight will be healed of whatsoever disease they have. I commit them unto thee and bless them now, Father, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Billy, where's your prayer card? H, 1 to 100. 5200. H 5200. Who has H number one? Raise up your or H 50. Raise up your hand. Is that right? 5200. H 50. Would you raise up your hand? Prayer call with the H on it and the 50. Who has it? Raise your hand if you please. Are you sure you got the right number? The right place. H 50. Not here. H 51. All right, lady. 52. 53. 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 60 to 70. Stand up here to the right, if you will. If you can't get up, some of the ushers will help you. We're starting to pray for the sick now. You say, Brother Bram, what are you doing this way far? Now I'm trying to get that down to where I can catch each person and pray for them without the, that, that spirit of discernment. Yes. The emergency room tomorrow night, boy, asked about it. 60 to 70, 70 to 80, 80 to 90, 90 to 100. Stand up over on this side here. Just take your positions. H to 100. H. Every prayer card with an H on it, come over here and line up in your miracle order. And we'll see if we can get through these and maybe we can get you some more. Some more. And while we're waiting, here's Hank, it's just to be prayed for. Would you Christian people... Bow your head just a moment while we pray for these handkerchiefs. Now, our Heavenly Father, we bring to you these handkerchiefs and little parcels. In the Bible, we are taught that they're taken from the body of St. Paul. Handkerchiefs and aprons. Unclean spirits went out of people and diseases left them. We realize that we're not St. Paul, but you're still the same Jesus. Amen. And these people here are exercising their faith today as those people did in that day. And I ask, dear God, that you'll bless these handkerchiefs for their intended purpose. And whosoever receives these, may the disease depart from their body. That poor old mother waiting for the little baby, the one in the hospital room, the convalescent home, wherever it is, Lord, honor the prayer of your church tonight and heal the sick. For we commit them unto thee, in the name of thy beloved Son, the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may come get them. If you forget to bring one up, 
just write me down at the office at Jeffersonville, Indiana, at Post Office Box 325, or just Jeffersonville, Indiana, and you'll be sent one free, a little piece of ribbon that I prayed over. That you, that's your faith. It's just a place of contact, just like anything else that we pray for the sick and afflicted. Now, here's a large line of people, long string of people. Now, I want just to talk to you just a little bit. The way I've tried to do it before, I've tried to pray for four or five, let the Holy Spirit talk to them. Then you come to find out, when you do that, I can't shake myself out of it. The next one it catches, the next one it catches. I never thought about seeing if he would use it out like that and then bring the people up and pray for them. That's different. Taking one by one, that prayer line there would take me from now until in the morning to get through them. But we can pray for them in the next few minutes. I don't mean just rushing through here like cattle. I mean to pray for them. The Bible said the prayer of faith shall save the sick. God shall raise them up. Not only am I going to pray for them, but they're expecting you to pray for them. You are just as much to do in this and just as responsible before God as I am myself. Your prayers. What if your mother's standing here? If my mother was standing there, I sure appreciate you praying for her. If my wife is in that line, or my baby, I appreciate your prayers. And it's not just one man's prayer, it's all of our prayers. Everyone that prays will just mean that much more. And I'm just not going to pray for him. You must pray for him too. How many will do that? Say, I'll do it myself. I'll pray, Brother Bram. I'll stay right here. Hold on to God and pray. That's, we don't know what God will do. It's hard telling what He will do. Last week, or a couple weeks ago, Mr. Softman here, I don't see him just now, up on Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, I seen our blessed Lord by the faith of the people that lovely Canadian group sitting there with one accord, Anglican, Baptist, Presbyterians, praying with one accord, and I seen our Lord Jesus just do everything in answer to their prayer. Sure. Only thing I do is stand there and talk to him a little bit, lay hands on him in the congregation, go to pray. God would just do great things right before us. Miracles. Certainly, you got to believe it and pray. And that's what we can do for these dear people. That's what God's got us here together for tonight. Is to cleanse our hearts from sin first. And to pray for the sick. That they can go on with God. And we want to do that. And each one of you is guilty before God. If you don't pray for the sick. Now, I think they're trying to get the line lined up down there. Each one in their order. And I'm taking just a little time. So that I can feel myself back normal again. And we're going to ask for prayer. How many in here believes in prayer for the sick? Oh, my. That's wonderful. And we know he will do it. Because God promised he would do it. And God is true to his promise. And I believe tonight we'll see the hand of the living God move in our midst. Won't that be something to tell the people tomorrow? That God came down in our midst. Now, the initial way, the way the Lord told me... He said, when these signs are done before the people, that will cause them to believe. For they know that man couldn't do that. I spoke, you've read my book. I said, I'm uneducated. I could not get the people to believe. He said, these signs are given to you for this purpose. Not to cause them to believe me, but believe him. I have nothing to do with it. I get sick myself and have to pray for mercy. Now, I ask you to pray for me when I'm sick. Then I pray for you. And we're no more, we're not greater than one another, we're all the same. We're just, if a person is no more than a little housewife, she's just as much in the kingdom of God as the apostle or prophet or whatever he is. She's God's child. And there's no difference in us. God put some to do one thing and some another, that don't make us above anyone. That is God chose us. That's the reason I differ with the Catholic belief in the intercession of saints or the Virgin Mary. Virgin Mary is a wonderful woman, certainly. She brought the Lord Jesus to the earth by the command of God, but he could have used anybody else he wanted to. She's not a god or a goddess. She's just a woman. She's in glory, certainly she is. But she's no way at all for her to intercede. There's no scripture in the Bible for that. There's one intercessor between God and man, and that's the man Christ Jesus. None other. Anything different from that, anything that intercede for you, any saint, any person outside of that is purely high form of spiritualism. 
The dead are passed on. They're in the presence of God, but cannot intercede. That's exactly right. Spiritualists believe that, but not Bible teaching doesn't believe that. Nothing against Catholic people. My people are Catholic. I'm an Irishman. My mother and father both are Catholic people, come from Catholic families. But I, me, I um, love the Lord, Jesus, and been born again. I'm a Nazarene, Pentecostal, Baptist, Catholic, born again Christian. <laughs> Amen. And I love you all. Catholic don't mean a Catholic man or woman is just as much in the sight of God as anybody else. Certainly, I just differ with them in their doctrine. I don't protest the, the Catholic people. I protest Catholic doctrine. I protest a lot of Protestant doctrine, too. That's right. I believe what the Bible says is the truth. I believe God's in His Word. And that alone, that's the only sacred thing we got left on the earth that confirms the Holy Ghost, or the Holy Ghost confirms the Word. Stay with the Word. It's the reason I'm firmly a believer. Did you get the wrong group? <laughs> About 70 to 80 is missing. And there's several of them missing. You sure you looked at everybody's card? If you have, why? All right. Maybe they just think they would have a healing service and they'd give the cards out early. They might have went home. All right. We'll pray for those that cheer them. All right. The Lord bless now. I wish if you would, lady, when you come for the first two or three, come up and just tell me what you want, you see, so I won't start into the deserting. Just tell me what you're here for. All right. The sister wants healing in her own body, not knowing what is wrong. She has a cloth for her healing. Will we bow our heads while we pray for our sister? Now, sister dear, I wish there was something that I could do to help you. The only thing I could do is pray for you. Will you believe that God will make you well? Our dear Heavenly Father, as this group of saints tonight, the called out, separated from the world, Sitting here, these people are on their hearts. I pray that you'll heal this dear woman. And this cloth that she's holding here, to go to someone else. Make it so, Lord, that this cloth will be blessed by the prayer of your people. And may the woman leave here tonight happy, rejoicing, and healed. And may her loved ones be healed also. In Jesus' name we ask this. Amen. Now, just a moment. There's nothing physically that you could see that has happened to the woman. But I truly believe that this woman healed. Do you believe it? I believe it with all my heart. Now go rejoicing, sister, and be happy. All right, brother? Bad eyes. Her eyes are going bad. All right. That's your child? All right. Little girl, do you believe Jesus will make you well? I do too. I think you're awful pretty, little girl. I've got a little Rebecca at home about your size. Now I want you to look out here, honey, the people's going to be praying for you that your little eyes will get well. Just look at the people. And then Jesus is up here to listen to every prayer. Don't you believe he's going to make you well? Sure. Now, did you see a while ago how Jesus was moving among the people and telling them what to do and all about it? Now, that Jesus is right here now to make you well. You believe that? All right, you bow your little head and all the rest of you pray. Blessed Lord, we bring this little child with bad eyes before you. You are the healer of our diseases and our afflictions. We do not know just what you would do. We would not ask you for a miracle. For you have said a weak and this generation seeks after such. But we would not be wanted to be classed as that to see, as to see a miracle to believe. But we would ask you, Lord, for mercy. And as this lovely, beautiful little girl leans over against my bosom tonight, I am these hundreds of people praying, I ask that you'll heal her. Give her back her correct sight. I ask it in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Now, honey dear, I don't know just what's happened, but I believe that... Let's take off your glasses. They won't hurt you. I want you to just look. Can you see me all right now? Could you tell me... Uh, could you see, can you see, I don't have to ask you, can you see better than you did before you was prayed for? Look out there in the audience and see if you see all right. Can you see all right now? Let's just look this way. Can you see my hand? How many fingers do I have up? Five. How many now? One. 
Well, that's wonderful. Now, could you see? Could you see better now than you did before you prayed for? Well, then God has healed you right here before. Now let us just raise our hands and say thank you, Jesus. Father God, we give thee thanks for healing this little girl tonight. May she be raised in a Christian home, giving praise and glory to thee. In Jesus' name we thank thee. Amen. God bless you, sweetheart. You're a mighty dear little girl. Let me hear from her, brother. Now, just keep praying. See what prayer does? What do you want Jesus to do? Right? Do you believe that God will make you well? Ulcers and gall bladder trouble and anemia. And awfully nervous. You believe the Lord will heal you? I see you got palsy too, the shaking. But let me have your hands just a moment. Now you people pray this is somebody's mother, no doubt. Now, blessed Lord, we as your church, as the, the church of the living God, as this service tonight, your people here that call by your name, you said if they will gather together and pray, then I'll hear from heaven. I pray for this dear woman. I ask you to heal her and to make her well and stop this palsy and to take away the gallbladder trouble and her other troubles. We as the church of God ask this blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, this is not asking for a miracle, but I'm going to drop your hands down. I want you to stand perfectly still. I want you to raise your hands up then. Well, let's say praise the Lord. Her palsy has stopped. God bless you, sister. I believe you're healed completely, don't you? Amen. Go on your road rejoicing. Now, let's say thank the Lord, you know, for healing the woman. Your trouble, sister. The doctor doesn't know. Yes. Uh-huh. You believe that the Lord Jesus will make you well? I know. All right. Let us bow our heads down while we pray for sister. Our Heavenly Father, as this little being woman stands here, I pray that you will heal her. Lay your healing mercies to her, that her faith will look to thee and be made well. Realizing, Father, that only the prayer of faith can save the sick. And this great church of God prays tonight with one accord that you will spare this little woman's life and let her live in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Nothing physically, of course, that could be shown, but I believe that you're healed. Don't you believe that? You believe you are, too. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Go rejoicing and happy and thank the Lord. Now, how, what you want, Jesus? Oh, I see it, yeah. Hmm? Oh, I see it. Huh? You believe that Jesus will heal you? Pus in the blood and sugar. You believe the Lord Jesus to make you well? Mother, I want you to look here just a minute. Just look at the saints of God going to be praying for you. Oh, how many is going to be praying for? Just raise your hands. Look at that. You know God's bound to hear that, isn't it? We love Him. I just believe now. And that little tumor or cancer will leave and go away right now. If you'll believe it. And God will make you well. Now, blessed Father, as praying for this dear woman... And as I hold her little wrinkled hand, only you, Lord, know that the, the day's work has passed over through these hands. But there hasn't been one thing but what you've seen it done. And we as the Church of the Living God ask for mercy for our dear sister tonight. That you will heal her and take this growth out of her mouth. Take the pus from her blood and the sugar, whatever is wrong. For we bless her now in the name of Jesus Christ, the resurrected Son of God. Amen. God bless you. I believe you're healed right now. You believe that? Amen. Go on your road. I say praise the Lord. The Lord bless her now. You see it. What do you want, God? With In your white sister. Oh, you're all right. Now, she wants prayer for her home, and something bothers her head. Now, blessed Lord, as these ministers, co-workers, laity, whatever is here tonight, with one accord we're praying for these people. Let thy spirit move at this moment, and heal this dear woman and make her completely well. We ask this blessing in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Now, sisters. 
Did you ever read the little book that was wrote, My Testimony About the Angel of the Lord Coming? How many ever read that little book? What did the angel of the Lord say? You were sent to pray for sick people. If you be sincere when you pray and get the people to believe it, nothing shall stand before the prayer. How many knows that? Yeah. All right. She believes it. Things has been done to let her know. God confirmed that that's the truth. I believe you're healed, sister. Your head's not bothering you at this time. The lady said her head trouble has left standing right here on the platform. Hallelujah. We give God praise. Go on your road, sister, and be happy and thankful. How do you do that? Your trouble is... A very worthy thing. She has a boyfriend that's gone away from God. She wants him to come back. She wants her father to be healed. And who else was that? Your eyes. She wants her eyes to be healed. God bless you, young lady. Let us pray for this lady. Our Heavenly Father, we bring this just a child to you. And we know what a problem is today, a young lady. The future of this nation, if it shall stand. And she longs and loves that boy. And somehow, Lord, wherever he is, bring him back to God tonight. Speak to his heart. Heal her dear old daddy who's worked so hard perhaps to raise her. And give her eyesight back correct again. We ask this as the church of the living God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you, sister. Of course, nothing physically to be shown, but I believe it he'll do it. Do you accept it? God bless you. You will receive what you ask. All right, brother. What do you want God to do for you? The, for your eyes. Oh, yes. All right. He's got cataracts coming on his eyes, he said. He wants God to heal him. Father, we pray that in Jesus Christ's name, that these cataracts will never cover the sight and blind this man. May the life that's in those cataracts die tonight and go out of them growth. And may this man be made well. I ask it in Jesus' name, along with this group of praying people. Amen. God bless you, brother. Nothing, of course, physically we could say, but go believing now and you'll receive ever what you ask for. Prostrate, sugar, diabetes, and bad eyes. Now, you all pray now. Remember, you're obligated to pray. Now, Father, not as we're obligated, but it's love that we feel for these poor, sick people. And Thou has been kind to heal us, and we are introducing them to Thee. And I pray that You'll heal this man and make him completely whole. In the name of Jesus Christ, Thy Son, Amen. God bless you now. Go and rejoice and believe with all your heart. Is it for your baby sister? Oh, bro. A little baby with enlarged heart broke on its leg and it's very sick. Let us pray now for the little one. Oh, blessed Jesus, I pray that you'll stop this condition of the baby and heal it. And we thank you for doing it in Jesus' name. We praise thee. Amen. Let's say praise the Lord. The baby stopped his house making a noise here. Let's say praise the Lord, everybody. All right. I believe the girl will go from it too, Mother. All right. What's your trouble, brother? Arthritis in your eyes. Let us pray. Father God, we bring this great, husky, strong man to you tonight, and ask that in Jesus' name you'll take the arthritis away from him and heal his eyes. As this church prays with one accord, in the blessed name of Jesus Christ, amen. God bless you, brother. Go believe me now. Be healed. All right. Sister, of course, I look in the eye. <laughs> You realize you only have one hope, that's Christ. That cancer kill you sure as the world, but God can heal you of that. You believe that, don't you? Oh, blessed Lord, while this woman, that deep shadow of death jumping out there, I couldn't help but to call him. 
I condemn this enemy upon the basis of the shed blood of Jesus Christ and this sanctified church that I pray in one accord. May the devil and death depart from this woman and she be made well. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. Look here, sister. You were going to die, but I believe you're going to live. Go rejoicing and be happy and thank God for your healing. Amen. Multiple scrolls. You believe that God will heal you and her too. Now let us pray for our sister here. Oh God, she's overweight and her eyes are bad. Her niece has multiple sclerosis, many ailments, but Thou art the Lord that heals all of our diseases. And I pray sincerely that You'll heal this woman and also the one she's asking for. We ask this blessing for her in the name of Jesus Christ, thy son. Amen. Now look, sister, of course, there'd be nothing physical we could see. We don't ask for it. But do you believe that you're healed? Do you believe that the sclerosis is that? It's Brother Stockman. The other night in Canada, a little baby was brought to the platform with multiple sclerosis. It taken two men to hold the child. Like this. And I said, all you church pray. And we went to prayer and laid hands on the little fella. And while I was praying, he said, let me loose, I'm healed. And the man looked at me and I said, turn him loose. And when they turned him loose, he was sick. He couldn't even hold his legs up. And he started like this. And he went down, clapping his little hands and praising God perfectly, normally, and well. Small of us for God bless you, please. How do you do, sister? You want the Lord Jesus to heal you? What do you want him to heal you? You believe that God will take the cancer and stuff like Let us pray for our sister. Dear Heavenly Father, death is near the woman and so is life. Jesus Christ, God's Son, stands here. For Thou hast said, Wheresoever two or more are gathered in my name, I'll be in their midst. And in these hundreds tonight that's gathered here in the auditorium, you're here, Lord. And I lay hands upon her with the prayer of this church, asking if this cancer and conditions of her body leave, and may she be made well. We condemn the cancer and the sickness of her body upon the basis of the vicarious suffering of our Lord Jesus, who defeated Satan and all of his sickness at Calvary. We ask it to leave in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, sister dear, of course, cancer is a killer. And, but if Christ is a life giver, but now you just don't look towards that anymore, towards the cancer. Don't even think you're going to die. The doctors give you up. That's all they could do. That's, they've done all they could do. But God hasn't given you up. I've seen just shadow of people made perfectly well. You go out of here just happy and rejoicing and say, Thank you, Lord. The promise is mine. Take it up on the basis of the Word and the resurrection of Christ. And you'll live. Okay. Amen. You return back and tell them what the Lord's done for you. Amen. God bless you. That's very good. What would the Lord, you want the Lord to do for you, sister? You want to be healed, be an anemic. All right. She's hard of hearing and anemic. So let us bow our heads and pray. Now, blessed Lord, here is a woman who is anemia. And... Blood cells of white eat up the red. She's hard of hearing. But thou, Lord, can heal her and make her well. I pray that you will grant it. And as I tonight with this church of God, lay hands up on her. And Lord, now we don't ask for miracles. But we would desire, Lord, of thee, that it might encourage those who are looking on that you would restore this woman's hearing to her perfectly, 
that she would be able to hear, and that would give her faith to believe more for her anemia condition. And now may it be so as we, the Church of God, pray this prayer of faith to you, asking kindly in the way you said, ask the Father anything in my name, I'll do it. We ask God in Jesus' name to heal the woman. Amen. Now, which ear were you hard hearing in? Do you hear me now? Do you hear me now? Do you hear me now? Now she can hear it perfectly. She said, here's her word, she could hear it, but it all be messed together. She couldn't hear it. Now watch her now. Do you hear me now? Yes, I do. This is you, my name. Praise the Lord. Yes, I do. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's a whisper. Now, I think we ought to thank our Lord for that. Don't you? You believe you're the weak or something? You're one weak eye. Oh, they don't focus. All right. That is with your glasses off. They don't focus. All right. Now, we are not asking our Heavenly Father for miracles. How many understand that? We're just praying for the sick. That's all we can do. God's the only one who can do miracles. I can't, per- can't perform miracles. I don't believe there's anyone else can. I believe it comes from God. And the only thing we can do is ask, humbly ask our Father. But if He doesn't focus His eyes, we are claiming His healing just the same. Yes, sir. But He might be able to do it. I don't know. But you pray with me that God will do it for this young man. It might show here. I don't know. Let us pray and ask God. Now, my dear brother, have faith now. Just with quite humble reverence, with just as much faith to believe that God will do it as you believe you can walk off the platform. Blessed Heavenly Father, I bring to thee this my brother, young man, and has to wear eyes of the over glasses over his eyes of strong, so that it'll pull the focus back to its right condition. We're happy that someone is able to grind a glass like that to help us. But Father God, thou art the healer of these bad eyes crossing over and un- uh, making their focus incorrect. But we would not ask the miracle, but would you be so kind, Lord, that it, it seems good in your sight tonight, that the people might know that you're present and believe on you, the other people here that's got bad eyes. We see you give sight to that little girl a few moments ago. Now bring this focus back normally, Father. I pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Now, I want you to take your glasses off and look out through that way and see if your eyes are focused. Can you see? Now, he said they're not focused right yet. Maybe we could just once more ask this. Just keep your glasses off this time. Now bow your head, everyone. Now, I trust that we're not trying to tip God to perform a miracle. Now, brother, I have faith. Remember, we're trying to have faith with you. See? But it'll be according to your faith that will be done. I believe with all your heart that God will do it. Now, Lord, we see in the Bible that one time Jesus prayed for a man, and he looked up and he saw a man like trees. He prayed again. And when he did, the man could see all right. Now, if there is something wrong that you would desire him to be in this condition, if there's disobedience or something, we pray that you will forgive us for asking this. And we pray that you will take away his sin or whatever it would be if something of that type has caused it. And if it be pleasing with thee tonight, Lord, to find our faith looking to thee, would you this time uncross the eyes of this boy 
in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to ask every head to be bowed just a moment and your eyes closed and just keep praying. Now, I want you to keep your eyes closed too, son. Now, I want you to turn towards me and look at my finger and believe. Do you see one finger? Is it focused on my finger? You can see now? All right, raise your head. Now his eyes are corrected. He can, I, how many fingers I got up? One finger. They're focused normally now. Let's say praise the Lord for that. How about bless you, brother? Go on your road and come to be happy. All right, but you come, son. What do you want God to do for you, sir? No. He has 30% loss of hearing and real nervous. Let us bow our heads, will you, pray? Blessed Lord, Thou can give him his hearing, and Thou can take the nervousness away from him. If you could stop a nervous sea one night, you said, Peace be still, the winds and the waves obey you. God grant that the nervousness leaves this man's body, and his hearing is restored normal. I ask this blessing in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Now, 30%. That would be quite a bit, almost half of your hearing gone. Now, I want to whisper to you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Say amen. That's full hearing. I'll have to get him to the microphone or you'll never hear me. This is this. Can you hear me now? Just a whisper. God has healed you. Now look, I want to say something to you. While I was praying, and the church was praying, you felt yourself quiet and you didn't. Your nerves are gone. It's all right. You're healed now. God bless you. Let's say thanks to the Lord. Uh, I know it's a little late, but we will ask that you have perfect stillness. Just concentrate on God to these friends. Imagine there are years of suffering between men behind many of these lives. Let us really be quiet and still and pray with Reverend Branham here that we may see them delivered. Please. What do you want God to do for you? Yeah. Infection and your brother with a cancer. In his ear. You believe that God will heal him? Now, well, I thought I was closer to the mic. She has an infection. Her brother has an ear trouble that could be cancer. Let us pray for them now. Dear God, as this young woman stands here for her brother and for herself, years ago as little boys and girls running around the house hanging on to mama's apron, but they've grown up now. God, I pray that you'll heal them. Granted, honor the prayers of the church as we pray. In Jesus Christ's name, I ask this. Amen. And now look, sister. Of course, there's nothing I can see at this time, but this handkerchief, put it on your brother. God bless you. Don't doubt, but it is. All right. What do you want Jesus to do for you? You believe that God will remove it? Heal you from the accident and make you well. The lady has had an accident. She's got a growth on her forehead here. She wants Christ to heal. Let us pray now all together. Dear Jesus, I pray that you will heal the woman and make her every bit whole. Oh, she stands here. She's waiting along the line. It's her time for this great church to pray for her. I pray that you'll grant it. In the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, amen. You believe, Mother? All right. I believe you with all my heart. All right. What do you want Jesus to do for you, sister? Your gallbladder, all right? All right? And you believe it he'll do it for you? Now bow your head. You heard her trouble, and we'll pray. Blessed Father, as this woman stands here, she may be getting along in the years, but so was Sarah. But you gave her a promise, and she believed it, and you manifested it to her. And I pray with this great church tonight that you'll manifest your blessings to this woman and may she be healed. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Prayer of faith shall save the sick. You accept it? And go rejoice in heaven. All right. All right. All right.
Yes. Um, heart trouble. You believe that God will heal you? Yes. Yeah. She says she has heart trouble, dropsy, and other ailments that she believes that God will heal her. Now let's bow our heads and pray for the lady. Blessed Lord, as this little lady stands here tonight to be prayed for, I lay my hands up on her. And by faith, all this great ransom church here lays their hands on her by faith. And we believe that the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And all great angel who come that night in the room said, Be sincere, get the people to believe. As all sincerity that I can pray for these people, I ask that you will heal her. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. God bless you, sister. No, ma'am, I don't. Come no. on, your road to rejoice, and God bless your heart. <laughs> oh, I just love. Don't you like old people? I just love their second children. I love little children and old people. I love everybody, but I, it looks like there's just like little children trying to help us. Like, what do you want Jesus to do for you, sister? Oh, you're standing for your husband. That's a very Christian thing. Christ stood for us all. You're standing for your husband, your sweetheart. I pray that God will heal you. We'll all pray for her husband. Blessed Lord, as this little woman stands here for her husband, I pray, dear God, that the man who has married her, that when she goes to her home or whatever the place is she he's at, may she find him well. Grant it, Lord. We send her to find this. And thou hast said, as thou hast believed, so be it. And we pray that she'll find him well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, sister. Don't doubt now. Believe it, you'll get well. Amen. What does Jesus, what do you want Jesus to do for you? Sister, brother, now let's bow our heads as we pray. Heavenly Father, we pray for this man and his heart condition and his other troubles also. And we ask, as the ransom church of God, that you'll heal him as I lay hands upon him. My hand represents this whole audience. And I pray that you'll heal him. May the heart trouble leave him and may he live many years yet and enjoy good health. For the glory of God, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, brethren. I say this, church, I don't believe there's a person where you know that I catch them as they come by. I don't believe there's a person who's passed through this platform tonight where I've been healed of God. I agree. All right, sir. What would you want Jesus to do for you? Well, bless your heart. Here's a worthy person. He's shell shocked, seventy-five percent shell shocked from the surf. This boy in this condition means that the flag still waves over the land of the free and the home of the brave. God bless his gallant soul. Oh, eternal and blessed God, as he laid down on the trench. For this to be America so we could preach the gospel, you hung on the cross for healing. We bring him to you tonight and ask that every nerve be quietened. May he go from here tonight and be well. I ask it in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. The reason I prayed shortly, brother, I, with all my heart, I believe that you're healed. Yes, amen. God bless you. Go on your road and rejoice in God. God bless you. Brother kid, I know you. Amen. How long have you been preaching the gospel? I want to pray for this is sister kid. Come here. This old couple's only about 80 or 5, 75, 76 and 7, two preachers. Been preaching for years and years and years. If you want to see a couple of little sweethearts, this is them. They call me through the darkest of night, through the storm, where they're hurt, where they're in a wreck, the water is. And I've got the first time for God to fail to answer prayer right then and there when I pray for him on the phone. <laughs> for long distance talk. What you say? She just wants to testify. Bless her little old heart. This little woman's been in the gospel field before I was born. Fifty years. Well, I'm glad my arms are years ago. I had a very bad thing. The doctor said I couldn't wait. Didn't do anything much for me. And I said to my husband, I said, nine days and nine, I couldn't sit down for a good lay down. I said, I'm not the shade. The doctor told me, they said, this is nothing for me. Maybe she wouldn't reach me. I said, I'm not going to go to the doctor. I said, I'm not going to go to the doctor. I said, I'm not going to go to the doctor. I said, I'm not going to go to the doctor. I said, I'm not going to go to the doctor. I said, I'm not going to go to the doctor. I said, I'm not going to go to the doctor. I said, I'm not going to go to the doctor. I said, I'm not going to go to the doctor. I said, I'm not going to go to the doctor. I said, I'm not going to go to the doctor. I said, I'm not going to go to the doctor. I said, I'm not going to go to the doctor. I said, I'm not going to go to the doctor
Dear Jesus, bring mercy to this man who is so desperately in need. Thou did make the ears of man, and you made the whole body of man. And I pray that you'll heal this man tonight and make him well. May the blessed Lord Jesus strike his power of healing across him tonight by his faith looking up, and may he be made completely whole. I pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Now just with your head, God, let's move. Jesus Christ's name, rise up 